it's beyond beautiful and I want to visit. So I'm sorry England, but I am moving to Scotland. I know I have got the weather to contend with, but I'm sure I'll be fine. I mean... Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and I hope you're well. And if you're new here, you're welcome. My name is Gloria and on this channel, I do reaction videos about the UK. I share my experiences living in the UK and all the wonderful things I'm learning about the UK. So please don't forget to smash the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up before you leave. And if you've noticed guys, the channel has reached its 5k subscribers milestone. I know guys, I am not as consistent as I should be, but I am very grateful for your support. I'm grateful for you sticking with me. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So guys, if you can recall, in one of my previous videos, I did say I was going to be focusing on some of the countries in the British Isles. So today, the spotlight is going to be on Scotland. So shout out to all my Scottish subscribers. I work with a lot of Scottish people and I can tell you they are very friendly. I have visited Scotland. I visited Edinburgh and I loved it there. It's so beautiful. So I am very excited to see what other places to visit in Scotland and what there to know about Scotland. So guys, without further ado, let's jump right into it. <music> If you want to go back in time and feel like you're in a fairy tale, Scotland is the place for you. It's easy to see why so many legends and popular books such as Harry Potter have been born here. It's truly one of the world's most enchanted places. So for our first location, we are going to visit the Old Man of Stor. Now the Old Man of Stor is located on the Isle of Skye, which is about a five hour drive from Edinburgh. It's one of my all time favorite rock formations. I felt like I was on the set of Game of Thrones. When you drive to the store, you can see it in the distance and it gets you like so pumped. It's just such a cool rock formation. Now to hike to the Old Man of Store, it's about a four kilometer walk. You'll go through some conservation gates and you'll reach the infamous rock binnacles. I went there for sunrise and sunset and both occasions were absolutely breathtaking. When I was there, crows were flying around the rocks and there's just some sheep Aww. running around. I mean, it was so magical. The legend of the old man of store is supposedly a giant lived there a long time ago and when he was buried, his thumb was left sticking out of the ground, creating the really? mystical rock wow. formations. When you go there, it's easy to see why it's one of the world's most iconic rock formations. I have to say this is one of my all time that. favorite places and I recommend everyone to see it at least once in their life. Just a few minutes away from the old mana store, there's oh, a breathtaking waterfall called Meow Falls that cascades down into the ocean. There's also a nice viewpoint where right you can now. get Life. a great view of the waterfall. There's also just beautiful sea cliffs in the area. One of the most famous is Kilt Rock, which uh, looks like a kilt that descends down to the ocean. All the east side of the Isle of Skye, there's just such beautiful coastline there. So after we're gonna head over to another one of Scotland's most iconic locations, to the Glen Finan Viaduct. So it's located at the top. These Gaelic names, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce it now. Of Loch Shill in the West Highlands of Scotland. It was completed around 1898 so it may look familiar because it was featured in, in Harry Potter to see the train going there when it's heading to Hogwarts. So when I was there, yeah. I wanted to get a close up to the bridge. So I walked underneath it and I was just shook by how big it really was. I mean, those arches are just massive. So after I hiked to a good vantage point where I could see the famous train go across the viaduct. I mean, it's just such a magical place. The backdrop of Loch Shale is absolutely stunning. And definitely recommend visiting there. All right, so after Glen Finan, we're gonna head over to Edinburgh. Now, if you wanna go back in time, Edinburgh is a must. Edinburgh is the place where J. King Rowling was when she wrote Harry Potter. So when you're gonna go there, you're gonna get all sorts of magical inspiration. When I first started solo traveling, Edinburgh was one of the first places I've ever went to. It's this medieval old town with intricate neoclassical buildings, cobblestone streets, and beautiful, gardens the iconic edinburgh castle yeah. overlooks the city and is home to scotland's crown jewels when i was there i didn't go to the castle because it was so crowded and i didn't really feel like spending money kind of regret it but death when we went there we had to go back at night later in the night to take pictures it was so crowded the queue 
was huge. So yes, I, I can relate to that. Definitely recommend go checking that out. One of my favorite places in Edinburgh is Calton Hill. It's just a short walk from the castle and it offers a beautiful view of the city. They have this really cool... Wait, is it me or am I hearing him pronounce it Edinburgh? Or am I pronouncing it wrong? Edinburgh. 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 What is the correct pronunciation, please? Someone tell me in the comments. National Monument there, these really cool pillars. All right, so while we're still in Edinburgh, we're gonna head over to Arthur's Seat. Now, Arthur's Seat is located in Holly Rod Park and is just a short walk from Edinburgh Center. Now, Arthur's Seat is an a extinct volcano that has an elevation of 823 feet. When I was there, I just saw Arthur's Seat from the distance and I, I was like, okay, I wanna hike it because I wanted to get a, a view of all of Edinburgh. So anyways, I made the hike up. You'll walk around Hollywood Park, take the short little hike up there. When I was there, it was so windy. I like couldn't believe how windy it was. It nearly blew me over. After I hiked to the top, I went down and walked around Hollywood Park and just enjoyed the views of Edinburgh. Just such a beautiful city. Funny. So after Edinburgh, we're head back over to the west side of Scotland to visit the Eileen Donan Castle. Hope I said that right. If you're driving to the Isle of Sky, you're gonna drive right by it. It's situated on a small tidal island at a point where three great sea locks meet. So the castle was built in the 13th century. I'm really mad at myself because I didn't stop here. When I first drove by it, it was good weather. I just didn't even know it existed. And then the second time I drove by it, it was just pouring rain. So I just couldn't, couldn't even go to the castle. It's definitely one of the biggest regrets I have of it in Scotland. So definitely don't make my mistake and make sure you make a pit stop at one of Scotland's most famous castles. All right, so after the castle, we're gonna make the short drive over to the nearby Coolin Mountains. Now the Coolin Mountains are this very unique mountain range located on the Isle of Skye. When I was there, I went to the Sligashan Bridge, which is at the base of the Coolin Mountains. The Sligashan Bridge is just super famous and scenic. When I was there, I didn't get many shots of the bridge because there was a lot of people on them. But I did get some beautiful shots of the mountains. They had such a unique shape. I love the contrast of the green peaks against the blue sky backdrop. I mean, it was just Incredible. such a stunning location. Perfect. Another enchanting location in the Coolin Mountains is the Fairy Pools. Now, the Fairy Pools is just a short 30 minute drive from the Sligashan. The fairy tales, they're just located at the base of a dramatic black Coolin Mountains. I was just blown away by the vibrant oh, wow. green slopes and the dark mountain in the background. It was just pitch black. I felt like Gandalf was going to run down with a massive horse army like in the Two Towers Lord of the Rings movie. It was just so epic. When I was there, there were so many midges, which are like these annoying gnat-like bugs that bite. I mean, they're just horrible. Mm. I didn't have any bug spray, so I didn't dare walk down to the pools. Okay. I mean, I wish I would have gone. I mean, those pools are just such an iconic sight. The water is so magical and so clear, so that's another one of my regrets. I went to Scotland. So make sure you either bring bug place. spray or go in a different time than August. That's when I was there. So after the fairy pools, we're gonna head over to another myth location to the Fairy Glen. Now, the Fairy Glen is a very popular destination in the Isle of Skye. To get there, you're gonna drive on this really small, sketchy road to get there, find a little parking spot, and then you just make like the short five minute hike to the Fairy Glen. Now what it's famous for is it has these rings of rocks and people often put some money in the center as an offering to the fairies. When I was there, I found this really cool rock formation that I hiked to so I could get a better view of those rings. And I also got some really cool views of the area. I mean, the grass is just so green there. I mean, it was such a cool place. Sure. I felt like a kid walking around those green mm -hmm. hills, keeping my eyes open, see if I could see any mythical creatures or any fairies. It'll put you in a magical mindset. All right, so after the fairy glen, we're gonna head over to the Duncansby Stacks. Hope I said that right. Anyways, it's located in the most northern eastern part of the British mainland, it's just right at the tip there. Um, it's quite the drive from Edinburgh, so it's quite the road trip. It's home to some of the world's most beautiful ski stacks. Unfortunately, when I was in Scotland, I didn't have enough time to drive up there, but when I'm back, I'm gonna make sure I visit the dramatic landscape. I just can't get over how epic the sea pinnacles are. Just such an insane location. All right, so after the sea stacks, we're going to head over to the Bidian Nam Bian mountain. Probably said that wrong, but anyways, I found this place by accident. I was driving from the Isle of Skye down to Glasgow, and I stumbled upon this magic location. I mean, I couldn't believe how huge these mountains were. I felt like I was in Switzerland 
or Norway. I mean, I didn't even know Scotland had just big mountains. I thought it was pretty flat. The Badian mm -hmm. Nambian is 3,770 feet high. So it's just huge. I mean, there's a scenic waterfall and the valley was just beautiful. There was some sheep grazing. If you keep driving towards Glasgow, you'll pass some more massive mountains such as this one. And then if you keep going, you will drive by Loch Lomond, which is just another massive lake. This is why I love driving in Scotland. There's just so many beautiful occasions that you just stumble upon accidentally. All right, so for our final location, we're gonna head back over to the Isle of Skye to the Korang Mountains. Now, aside from the Old Man Store, I'd have to say the Korang is one of my favorite places and landscapes in Scotland. It's a set of dramatic rock formations located on the side of a mountain. Korang was formed by a landslide a long, long time ago. The grass is so green there, I felt like I'm like on a giant golf course. Anyways, to get there, I drove up this windy road. Be careful because I popped my tire because the road was super bumpy. Anyways, I got to the parking lot and I started the trek to the Kering. Now, it was a super easy hike. It only took me like 30 minutes. There's no elevation gain. On the hike, I came across some sheep that were just vibing. I also Love saw some really cool rock fields and then I was just surrounded by just these magical mountains. They just have this really unique shape that I've never seen oh, before. There's that. little lakes, and then you have the view of the ocean. It's just such a unique place. When I was there, I was lucky enough to have sunny weather. A lot of people I've talked to said when they've gone, it's just been so cloudy they couldn't even see anything. So I feel pretty fortunate about that. The Crane is just such a beautiful area that has offers great hiking trails and just some of the world's most outstanding views. All right, so that is it for my Scotland video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Scotland is just one of the world's most magical and beautiful places. There's a lot of locations that I left out. So much more to explore than just my video. But I hope this helps and hope it, and hope it inspires you to visit somewhere new this year. If you guys like my content, make sure you subscribe. Honestly, if this doesn't inspire you to visit Scotland, I don't know what will. Scotland is definitely one of God's masterpieces. It's stunning it's incredible it's beautiful I'm at, I'm at a lot of words to describe i really want to visit i am so so jealous of this guy ryan right now honestly oh my goodness it's so beautiful it's so beautiful you scottish people must be very proud because i would look at that the sheaves oh it's so scenic look at the places and he did justice to this video you must admit I mean, the video and everything is spot on. I'm sorry, England. I am moving to Scotland. I know I have got the weather to contend with, but I'm sure I'll survive. That was a lovely video. And I hope you're inspired to take a trip to Scotland. I know I am. And yes, and if you did, as usual, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're yet to. And until my next one, guys, stay safe. Bye. There's a reason why the colors of the rainbows are so bright It's for you and me to learn